As we know, government laws and regulations impact many aspects of today's automobiles and trucks. For service technicians, engine management has gone through many changes. Initially, engine management consisted of intake air creating a venturi effect in the carburation. Vacuum advance and engine speed controlled timing. Soon, air injection reaction systems, catalytic converters, mixture control solenoids and computer command control featuring the GM-CM electronic control module were used. To enhance performance while maximizing fuel economy and emissions control, port fuel injection and the P4 electronic control module were introduced. The subject of this Certified PLUS training presentation is the next step in engine management control, the 66U electronic control module. This ECM and its network of inputs and outputs will have a major role in future GM products meeting the government standards of 1995. In 1995, engine management systems will be required by law to detect engine misfire, monitor catalytic converter efficiency, and monitor canister purge flow rates. The 66U ECM and its engine management system is used on the 1993 Chevrolet Camaro and Pontiac Firebird when equipped with the 3.4 liter 60 degree pushrod V6. In this CPT presentation, we'll examine the 3.4 liter sequential fuel injection V6 engine, concentrating on its engine management system. After an introduction to the engine and hardware, we'll investigate the overall management strategy and system controls. We'll also review system diagnosis as well as related service procedures. Please note that the 3.4 SFI is similar to the 3.1 liter Generation 2 Special engine used on 1992 W cars in the California market. The course book for this CPT release contains a detailed comparison of these similarities. In general, you can see many similarities between the new 3.4 liter VIN S engine and the 3.1 liter VIN T it replaces on F car. Both are 60 degree V6s. The RPO code for the 3.4 is L32, while LHO is for the 3.1. The 3.4 has a larger displacement thanks to a larger bore of 92 millimeters, while the stroke for both is 84 millimeters. The 3.4 liter also features a higher compression ratio of 9 to 1, and sequential fuel injection compared to the 3.1 liters multi-port system. The 3.4 liter engine has several features worth noting. You will appreciate the ability to remove the injector rail assembly without removing the upper plenum. The unique intake manifold has a forward mounted throttle body and features an upper lower two-piece design. In addition to the familiar 7-notch crankshaft sensor and its 3X input to the ECM, there is a high-resolution Hall Effect 24X crankshaft sensor mounted at the front cover. Also new is a Hall Effect type camshaft sensor, which is mounted to the block. The 3.4 liter V6 also has an oxygen sensor on the left exhaust manifold as well as an oxygen sensor mounted on the right manifold. With the additional sensors and the 66U ECM, more output control is possible using an advanced engine management strategy. Three point four liter engine management is controlled by the 66U ECM. It is best to lay out the entire system before reviewing individual highlights. Major system information inputs include the manifold absolute pressure or MAP sensor, the oxygen sensors, one at each exhaust manifold, the throttle position or TP sensor, the engine coolant temperature or ECT sensor, 
the intake air temperature or IAT sensor, the NOx sensor, and two AC related sensors, refrigerant high side pressure and evaporator temperature. Also remember, this engine has two crankshaft position sensors as well as a camshaft sensor. At the transmission, inputs include the vehicle speed sensor or VSS and a fourth gear switch on automatics. With a manual transmission, there's a clutch switch input to help prevent engine flares during shifting, as well as smoothing out other transitions to close throttle. Major outputs for the system, also called controlled devices, include each of the individually controlled fuel injectors, as well as the fuel pump relay, the idle air control, or IAC valve, the ignition module coil assembly, the exhaust gas recirculation, or EGR, solenoid valve, the evaporative emission canister purge solenoid valve, the AC clutch, and the engine cooling fan. The ECM controls the TCC as found on previous models. However, the brake switch is not only hardwired into the TCC circuit, but it is also a discrete input to the ECM as well. The brain of the system is the 66U ECM. It is really two controllers in the same box. The E-side GMP6 controller and the T-side also a GMP6. Two controllers are used providing the processing power necessary to enable the engine management system to meet the upcoming governmental emission standards. The E-side basically handles the inputs and outputs that are event-based. These include fuel, spark, EGR, and canister purge. Time-based inputs and outputs are controlled on the T-side. Transmission, idle air control, diagnostics, air conditioning, cooling fan, and backup fuel functions are examples. Both controllers have a programmable flash EEPROM memory which will be reviewed later in this presentation. With the capabilities of the 66U ECM in mind, let's review the highlights of individual system control beginning with fuel. The six sequentially fired injectors feature saturated switch drivers and fuel can be delivered synchronous or asynchronous. Asynchronous delivery is for cold engine acceleration only. At engine startup, the ECM looks at coolant temperature and sets its run timer to end open loop operation based on the ECT reading. After the timeout period, the ECM looks at the O2 sensor's output voltage and determines if they are at operating temperature. If they are, the system enters closed loop operation. This is similar to other engines you've experienced. However, there are several unique inputs and outputs for 3.4 liter fuel control. The CAM sensor is the synchronizing trigger for sequential fuel control. During cranking, the ECM provides three prime pulses at all the injectors based on the 3x signal for startup. It then looks for the falling edge of the CAM signal to trigger injector number four. After this, the ECM primarily uses the 3x signal from the ignition module to time the sequential firing of the individual injectors. However, the 24x crank sensor has a unique role in fuel control. This is because the 24x contributes to filtering of the MAP signal at speeds below 3000 RPM. The 66U ECM reads MAP output at each of the 24X reference input signals. The ECM then averages MAP over every four counts to provide a more stable MAP reading for fuel control. IAC valve position is no longer needed to calculate airflow at idle for fuel delivery. This is also due to the filtering of the MAP sensor signal. In essence, speed density fueling is being used at idle in addition to higher engine speeds. 
As you've probably guessed, this was all done to improve engine starting as well as cranking and idle quality. For improved control of the air-fuel mixture, two oxygen sensors are used. The left sensor is used to control the three left side injectors. And the right side oxygen sensor is read by the ECM to control the right side injectors. In fact, it's best to think of the 3.4 liter SFI as two three-cylinder engines. The exception to this separate strategy occurs when a fault exists with either oxygen sensor. A fault at either sensor puts the entire system into open loop. Control of ignition timing uses the 3X and 24X crank sensors similar to fuel control. During closed loop idle control with the throttle closed, the ECM looks to the 24X crank sensor for idle speed. Minor deviations in idle speed are corrected by the ECM with spark control. Major deviations are handled by the IAC motor. Basically, when engine speeds are below 1200 RPM, the more exact 24X signal is used for engine speed. Above 1200 RPM, the 3X signal is used. This highly accurate 24X signal also provides several other improvements, including the elimination of idle mode fueling and an extensive idle relearn procedure. This is because the more precise 24X enables the ECM to control idle speed with spark timing as well as the IAC. In addition, the 24X crank sensor provides extra accuracy during crank and start for precise spark control. The 3X crank sensor, on the other hand, is used off idle above speeds of 1200 RPM. For emissions control, it's important to note that the canister purge solenoid is the only pulse width modulated output of the ECM on the 3.4 liter engine. Also, a three pintle digital EGR valve signaled by the ECM permits more precise control of combustion temperatures. Furthermore, an electric air pump is part of the 3.4 liter emissions control system when the vehicle is equipped with a manual transmission. Of particular note is the R134A air conditioning system and its relationship to engine management. There are three AC related inputs to the ECM. The refrigerant pressure sensor on the high side, the AC request input from the control head, and the evaporator temperature sensor probe mounted on the evaporator core and the actual sensor unit mounted on the HVAC assembly. The evaporator temperature sensor is the input to the ECM that specifically controls compressor engagement. When temperatures get too cold, the ECM commands the clutch off to prevent evaporator freeze up. To help prevent compressor failure, an additional low pressure switch is hardwired to the compressor and operates without knowledge of the ECM. The low pressure switch cycles the compressor power when pressure drops below 5 psi. Because the ECM thinks the compressor is engaged, some idle fluctuation can occur. Verifying the AC charge, therefore, is a concern when addressing an inconsistent idle condition. End part one. You should now prepare to take the first part of the test for this course. To take the test, you must have a number two pencil and the official student attendance and test form in front of you. Make sure the first seven digits of the course number printed in block nine of the student attendance and test form match the first seven digits of the course number printed on the course book and the videotape label. If you do not have the correct materials, stop the video and get them. Begin by placing the student attendance and test form in front of you so that the clipped corner is in the lower right. In the upper left-hand corner of the form, you will see a series of circles below the letters A through E. At this time, you will be filling in the test answers only. At the end of this video, instructions for completing the remainder of the form will be provided. 
This is the only answer sheet you will need for this course. In a moment, you will see the first test question and several possible answers. When you have decided on your answer, completely fill in the circle below the letter corresponding to the correct answer. Since this test will be corrected by computer, it is important that you avoid making stray marks on the paper. If you change your mind about an answer, be sure to erase your first choice completely before marking the correct answer. It is also important to avoid getting dirt or grease on the answer sheet, or folding it, as this may cause the computer to incorrectly score your test. As you take this test, remember that there is no time limit. You may take as much time as you wish to complete the test. You may also review the course book or rewind the videotape to find the correct answer. Begin test part one at line one of the test form. Test part one. Question number one. During cranking, the ECM provides three prime pulses at A, injectors number one and number two. B, injectors number three and number four. C, injectors number five and number six or D, all six injectors. Question number two. The 3.4 liter SFI V6 features two A, crankshaft position sensors, B, camshaft position sensors, C, input shaft position sensors, or D, output shaft position sensors. Question number three. Event-based 66U ECM inputs and outputs are handled by the A, ignition module, B, T side of the ECM, C, E side of the ECM, or D, EEPROM. Question number four. The 66U ECM averages map every four counts of the A, 3X crank signal, B, 24x crank signal, C, half x cam signal, or D, 64x output signal. When you must diagnose the 3.4 liter SFI V6, you'll find that the more elaborate engine management strategy offers you advanced data parameters and capabilities to fix it right the first time. As with any vehicle, diagnosis must begin with a clear understanding of the customer's concern. A thorough visual inspection is also essential. A loose wire or misrouted vacuum hose must not be overlooked. Also, remember that despite the advanced electronics, this is still an internal combustion engine and basic mechanical operation must be sound for good performance. Diagnosis must begin with the onboard diagnostic system check using the Tech 1. The Tech 1 starts by trying to establish data communication with the ECM. If data is not available, follow instructions to diagnose a lack of serial data. Next, the Tech 1 will ask you to perform the MIL system check. If the MIL is not functioning properly, use chart A1 to determine the cause. Then, start the engine. If the engine won't start, crank but won't run diagnosis is necessary. The final step of the check is to request Diagnostic Trouble Codes, or DTCs. If there are no valid DTCs, compare scan data values with the service manual list. If values are normal, use Section B, Symptom Diagnosis. If there's a value that isn't normal, use the appropriate Component System check in Section C. There are several new DTCs associated with the 3.4 liter SFI V6. Six codes cover the dual oxygen sensors and all will turn on the MIL. Each of the sensors that contribute to idle quality have codes. However, circuit errors for the CAM and both crank sensors do not turn on the MIL. And as you might have guessed, 
there are quite a few DTCs due to the greater number of AC-related inputs. These also do not turn on the MIL. These codes relate to system power and the 66U ECM. Note that a double EEPROM error does not turn on the MIL. The new discrete clutch switch on manual transmissions and the TCC brake switch on automatics have error DTCs. In either case, the MIL is turned on. While much of the available scan data is familiar, there are some new values to aid your diagnosis of the 3.4 SFI. For example, millivolt output of each oxygen sensor, right left or bank 1 2, can be displayed. You can review both short and long term fuel trim for bank 1 and for bank 2 as well. Fuel trim cell and fuel trim enable are also available. Fuel trim cell is the equivalent of block learn cell. For ignition control, you can view both the 3X and 24X crank sensors in addition to cam sensor output. Remember, these sensors influence both idle fuel and idle spark control. It is important to realize that the actual RPM figures of these readings will vary slightly due to the updating rates of the sensors. This is normal. The additional AC system sensors are viewable as well. Regarding emissions control, the requested percent of evaporative purge and if equipped air pump relay status can be seen. You can also view the number of key cycles since a DTC was set or cleared. After 50 cycles, the DTC is erased. Also, the PROM ID has been relocated. It is now called the calibration ID and is found under miscellaneous tests. There is another Tech One capability worth noting. The injector balance test is programmed into the Tech One mass storage cartridge. Be sure to follow Tech One instructions and thoroughly refer to the service manual discussion of this test. Finally, realize that any time an injector is physically disconnected, the drivers are shut off until a key cycle occurs. End part two. You should now prepare to take the next part of the test for this course. If you are unsure of the answer, you may stop the tape to think about the question, review the course book, or rewind the tape and review it before answering. Test Part 2. Begin this portion of the test at line 5. Question number 5. Separate DTCs are available for each A. Oxygen sensor B. Ignition coil C. Injector or D. Idle mode Question number six. DTCs are erased after A, 25 key cycles. B, 30 key cycles. C, 40 key cycles. Or D, 50 key cycles. Question number seven. When reading scan tool data parameters, fuel trim cell is the equivalent of A, injector balance cell. B, block learn cell, C, fuel pulse cell, or D, idle spark cell. Servicing the features related to the 3.4 liter SFI engine management system is basically what you would expect. However, here are a few special highlights, including using the Service Programming System, or SPS, which we'll cover later. Let's begin with fuel injector rail assembly removal. We've removed the cowl screen to aid photography. After disconnecting the battery and depressurizing the system, start with the two fuel line clamps. Remove one screw at the hold-down plate and slightly loosen the other. Slide the plate aside. Then disconnect the fuel lines. Remove the harness retaining nut and the fuel rail stud. 
as well as the vacuum hose at the fuel pressure regulator. After removing the coolant sensor connector, blow out any dirt around the injector bores. Now the fuel injector rail assembly can be pried out. Remove the injectors one side at a time. The camshaft position sensor is held into the front of the upper block by one bolt. The 3X crankshaft position sensor is also retained by one bolt and is found on the lower block. The 24X crankshaft sensor is a little bit tougher to get at. After removing the serpentine drive belt, remove the torsional damper bolt and washer. Then remove the crankshaft pulley. The torsional damper requires tool J24420B or equivalent for removal. Notice the back of the torsional damper. There is a 24 window disc which triggers the Hall effect switch. Now the 24X crankshaft position sensor and its two bolts can be removed. Proper replacement of the AC evaporator temperature sensor is particularly important. Access is limited and sensor probe position is critical. To replace the sensor, drain and recover the coolant. Remove the heater hoses at the cowl along with the clamp for the heater core pipes. In the interior, remove the glove box and right side hush panel. The sensor is clipped to the lower case. After removing the case cover, remove the heater core. In the back of the case, the sensor probe is visible. Use needle nose pliers and carefully pull it from the evaporator. A sealing grommet on the case for the wiring must be removed as well. Upon installation, the evaporator temperature sensor probe must be inserted into the evaporator at the central opening of the mesh so that it touches the plate. If not, evaporator freeze up and compressor damage could result. False low charge conditions are also possible. Also related to 3.4 liter SFI service are the state of the art MicroPack 100 ECM connectors. You may recognize them from the ABS-6 controller. Special crimp tool J38125-25 is required for terminal replacement. The secondary push lock retainers must be used to secure the connectors to the ECM. The 66U ECM allows you to take advantage of the service programming system or SPS. The tech line even series terminals T100, T50, and T20 connect directly to the vehicle. With the Tech 1, programming is remote using any CD-ROM terminal approved by TechLine. Please realize that a service replacement ECM requires programming. If unprogrammed, the engine will fail to start. Also verify that all data line and power connections are secure. Any interruptions of data transmission or power during an SPS procedure can damage the 66U ECM. Before beginning an SPS procedure, check for the latest service bulletin information. After exchanging plug-in ESC modules, turn the ignition to on. The engine must not be cranked during the key cycle. Verify battery voltage is between 11 and 14 volts and all accessories are off. Be sure to exactly follow the procedure for the type of tech line equipment you're using. You must wait for the programming successful message. Turn the ignition off for five seconds to power down the ECM. Perform the IAC reset procedure and any other routines called for by the service manual or an applicable bulletin. For further information, refer to the SPS Certified Plus Training Course number 56010.00. End Part 3. 
Before answering the last video test questions, please complete the portion of the student attendance and test form that identifies you and your dealership. If this portion of the answer sheet is not completed correctly, you and your dealership will not receive credit or certification for this course. Begin by placing the student attendance and test form in front of you so that the clipped corner is now in the upper right. Print your last name in block 1, located in the upper left-hand corner, putting only one letter in each box. Print your first and middle initials in block 2. Print the name of your dealership in block 3 your dealership city in Block 4, and state in Block 5. Be sure to use the official U.S. Postal Service abbreviation for your dealership state. Print your Social Security number in Block 6. Enter your dealer code in the space provided. Print today's date in Block 8. Return to Block 1 in the upper left-hand corner of the form. Below each letter of your name is an alphabet. Fill in the circle with a letter that corresponds to the letter of your name at the top of the column. Follow the same procedure for the numbers of your Social Security number in Block 6, today's date in Block 8, and your dealer code in the space provided. You should now prepare to take the final part of the video test for this course. If you are unsure of the answer, you may stop the tape to think about the question, review the course book, or rewind the tape and review it before answering. Test Part 3. Begin this portion of the test at line 8. Question number 8. 24X crankshaft sensor removal requires removal of the A. Serpentine drive belt B. Crankshaft pulley C. Torsional damper or D. All of the above Question number 9. When replacing the evaporator temperature sensor probe, it must be inserted so it A is positioned in its original location. B is on the thermal expansion valve. C touches the evaporator plate. Or D seals the compressor output line. Question number 10. During an SPS procedure, verify that A data line and power connections are secure. B. Battery voltage is between 11 and 14 volts. C. All accessories are off. Or D. All of the above. You have now completed the video portion of the test. The course book accompanying this videotape contains the final part of the test. Once you have completed the test, you may wish to make a photocopy of it for your records. After photocopying, place the student attendance and test form in the pre-addressed envelope. No postage is needed. Remember to complete the questions in the back of the course book before mailing the test form to CPT headquarters. Good luck! For service technicians, engine management has gone through many changes. And Chevrolet Camaro and Pontiac Firebird have evolved within this history. The next step in engine management, the 66U electronic control module and its network of inputs and outputs will have a major role in future GM products meeting the increased government standards of 1995. Use this training, the available service information, and your years of experience to make each one of your customers totally satisfied.